The next three are all variations of the same test, and they're all designed to target carpal tunnel syndrome. They all have various holds, one to three minutes, and they either have the wrist in a neutral position or in a flexed position. They are all fairly decent tests with respect to carpal tunnel syndrome. So what I'm going to show you is the carpal compression test, where the wrist is in a neutral position, where the thumbs are placed in right on the area of the carpal tunnel, and remember that's right over the capitate. And then you actually hold that as a clinician for approximately one minute. And what you're looking for are symptom reproduction in your patient's wrists along, the long, along those lines of the medium nerve. So you'll see thumb and typically the first two digits with this type of compression. This has a positive likelihood ratio of 10. It's a very diagnostic test, and it might be useful for you in identifying carpal tunnel syndrome. Now, an old reliable that you commonly see studied, in fact, this may be the most studied special test on the market today, is the Phelan's test. But what's unique about the Phelan's test is that people tend to think it's this. That's actually the modified Phelan's test. Phelan's test actually involves taking the patient, putting their elbows on a table, and allowing their hands to hang in a loose, flexed position. We keep them in this position anywhere from one to three minutes. And we're looking to see if being in that flexed position actually reproduces the symptoms associated with carpal tunnel syndrome. Like I said, this has been studied a lot. Some have found value with this, some have not. Some have actually called the modified Phelan's test the Phelan's test when it is not. This is truly the Phelan's test. This was what originally Phelan actually produced, and this is the one that seems to have uh, the most value with respect to carpal tunnel syndrome.